spring is such an amazing time of the year. And as we approach late spring, toward the end of May, hot broad beans are ready. Lovely. Been waiting for those. <laughs> These were sown last October, planted out in November. And there are some lovely sized beans in there. That's how I like them, not too big, because they get a little bit sort of leathery. The skins get a bit leathery if you let them get too big, don't they? They do. Great thing about growing your own is that you can harvest any of your vegetables at the optimum time for you. Not when the supermarkets say, not even when the textbooks say, not even when I say. <laughs> You pick them when you like them. And you could see that they're still a lovely green colour. That means they're still quite young. They have a lovely sweet taste to them. Whereas when you let them get a bit bigger, which some people like to do because they want to get the maximum size crop from the broad bean, they go a bit whitish grey in colour and they do have that leathery skin. If you cook them, you can rub it off. I think it's a bit of a faff, really. <laughs> if you've ever had that feeling, so you've thought, I don't want to grow these, I urge you to try again and then harvest them younger. We've got some garlic over there which has a bit of rust on it, and I'm actually going to be harvesting that over the next few weeks. I'm not going to let it go to full term because you can eat green garlic, or some people call it wet garlic. And I tell you what, a few broad beans with a little bit of that cut up nice knob of butter. One of their best lunches in the world. It's the time of year for peas. They don't like it too hot, but equally they don't like it too cold. But they are a cool weather crop. And Mrs W will be very pleased to see that I've spotted a pea that is now starting to emerge oh, from yes. the flower. Oh yes, won't be long now. It's their time. It's their time to grow and show off their splendour. In today's video, we have lots to do, not least the Grow Along Melon. Carrots, the broad beans, the onions are really starting to swell up now. They are, they're we can, really good. We can use those at any time now, using the largest one that's there. But you know, I was thinking, Mrs W, we've even got a dessert, because these strawberries, we're yeah. starting to get so many starting to ripen now. Yeah, definitely. That's a two-course meal. <laughs> Result. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, folks, Mrs W said that that P has her name on it. It definitely does. I saw it inscribed on the side. <laughs> to the melons, which are looking very good. Hopefully, yours are looking something similar to these might be a bit smaller, might be a bit larger. In warmer climates, you may already have planted yours out. Do let us know in the comments and how you're getting on. The ideal time for these to go out into their final growing positions is at the three to four leaf stage. Now we've got our strings in place because the melons will be growing up the strings. And if you want to know how, we've, how we do all of this, then do go back and watch our video where we planted out the tomatoes. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description because it is really quite a good way of growing your plants. It saves putting canes in, it saves you the cost of getting the canes. And 
these won't poke your eyes out. By the way, thanks all for the lovely comments that we've had over the last couple of videos. When we did the 10 essential tips, you all, you know, put your own tips in there and I'm following one of those now. And yes, it is essential to make sure that you are well hydrated. And this bitter lemon is going down very well. Mm. <laughs> Just for reference, we are growing three types of regular melon, which is Hearts of Gold, Amir, and Blenheim Orange. Now I've spaced these at two feet apart and that's probably the minimum that they want to be. You can go as much as three feet apart. But we want to grow and fit ours into this centre bed. So you can see he's got one, two, three leaves with a fourth now coming. And I'm just going to put that in there like so, over the top of the string. What I'm going to do is with the three varieties, I'm going to plant two of these hearts of gold, two Blenheim orange, and two Amir. Now, of course, we're not just growing regular melons. We're also going to be growing watermelons. Here they are. And you can tell the difference between them. They've got more like a celery leaf, haven't they? Yeah, sort of an ivy leaf type yeah. thing compared to the others. Yeah. They look nice healthy plants there, don't they? They do indeed. They do indeed, Mrs W. Now, I've made a hole big enough to accommodate these plants. And the variety is Sugar Baby. Now, unlike these melons, we won't be growing those up any support. The main reason for that is because they get quite large. And if you were to grow them up with support, you would then need to support the fruits. For us, what we're going to do is to let it trail along the back of the polytunnel. Within about four weeks, these shallots will be gone and so will the garlic. Their harvest time is fast approaching in June. And then it has all that space towards the back of the polytunnel, we can keep it under control so that it's not going to strangle the tomatoes. And I'm going to do the exact same on the opposite side of the polytunnel. Again, the onions will be gone, the carrots will be gone, and it'll have plenty of room to sprawl about and do what it wants to do. It's an amazing smell of onion around here, Mrs. W. <laughs> now, the next thing I want to do is to plant out our aubergines. You can see they've got to a nice size. And we're going to do a bit of interplanting because, as I said earlier, these onions we will start to use over the next week or so and they will start to disappear and then these will have the room that they need. So again, just make the hole the size that you need it. And then in you go. And the one thing I do like is a lovely aubergine, especially when we have our barbecues and a nice barbecue aubergine. If we're having a barbecue, you'll often grill them for me, won't you? Yeah. Or, or dry fry them. Yeah. Or griddle them or whatever. Or griddle, yes, that's yeah. the other way. I don't particularly need to water these in. They've had water from underneath. But what I do need to do is just to water Mrs W's plants in. You can see that she has put in here, what is it, tagetes? What yeah, are these ones of, here? Oh, four, four tagetes and the samantharinums. They're quite small plants, the antarinums, but they'll, they'll crack on, they'll be fine. Just encouraging a few pollinators to the melons because I think that's something that we they do need, isn't it? Oh yes. They also look very lovely too. Yes, that's true. In fact, <laughs> we've got one out over there. Yeah, one of the marigolds near the um, 
tomatoes is now starting to open up today, isn't it? So, it's good. All from self safe seed. <laughs> yeah, really, there's no need to be buying marigold or tajiti seed at all. They're one of the easiest seeds to save, aren't they? Yeah, and to grow. They're, they're really easy to grow. Quite hardy little plants as well, aren't they? So. It's quite warm in here, Mrs. W, 25.4 <laughs> degrees. Now, my original plan was to actually put all of these plants out last weekend and release the video. But we could see that we were due, not a cold snap, but some significantly cooler weather last week. It's Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. We were just getting into the sort of low teens, weren't we? Mm. 12, 13 degrees. No sun. It was very dull and we had a lot of rain. It really did tip a lot of rain down. So I've, I just delayed that planting to this week so that the conditions are really good for these plants to settle themselves in and get off to a good start. Looking at next week's forecast, we're above 20 degrees every day. And apart from one day of rain, there's a lot of sunshine to come. The other significant thing is, is that this thermometer is telling me that it was 12.2 degrees last night in this tunnel. And we've been monitoring that for the last week to 10 days and the temperature hasn't gone below 10 degrees Celsius. That's a great time to be planting these plants out because then they're not going to get really cold overnight. I want to plant out my sweet corn now. Now, although I'm not personally a lover of sweet corn, the rest of the family most definitely are, and especially the grandchildren. <laughs> yes. Absolutely <laughs> adore it. And my original plan was to grow two varieties and I know I can't remember your name so I apologize about that but somebody did put a comment in there about you can't grow two varieties together because they cross-pollinate. I did actually know that. I wasn't going to put them all here. We are some 150, 180 feet, perhaps even 200 to the start of our front garden. We have a border out there and that was where I was going to put those. However, academic now because this is the early bird fantastic germination the swift we actually only got four plants well three and a tiddler <laughs> now that will really be because that seed is quite old now and we thought we could get away with it but it's not to be so I really am only going to be growing one variety, which is early bird. I've dipped my holes and sweet corn want around about 14 inches between them. So they've got plenty of space to grow. They're quite big plants and most certainly tall plants. And you may have an issue with windrock if that's the case then you'll need to be thinking about staking them. However, for us, by planting them here in plot one, it's actually surrounded by fence trellis with the plants growing up and the wind either comes this way or it comes up the garden. So it should be well sheltered, hopefully. We grew them here a few years ago and we had really good success with them here, didn't we? So Indeed, fingers crossed yes. we'll have the same again. We did. Now, you might remember earlier in the year when I said that I found somebody who could supply us with some horse manure. And I know some of you sort of said, oh, be careful, it could have, you know, some nasties in it. And quite rightly. But what we did do before we have grown anything, this, this bed one in plot one, it has been fallow for the last, well, since January, hasn't it? It's had nothing growing in it. While we had it outside the, in the front garden, we did the broad bean test and 
it grew perfectly well. It was well rotted, as he told me, and things grow in it and grow in it okay. If you're wondering why I've spread some of our compost on top there, well, the manure is quite a light brown colour. Mrs W does like uniformity. <laughs> she doesn't like to see one bed which is a different colour to all the rest of our beds. So that's why I've sprinkled a bit on top. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> no need to apologise. We all know that you have your little foibles. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you wouldn't have me any other way. Well, maybe you would. <laughs> it's a bit late for that now. <laughs> You see, it's got a really great root system. We sowed these back in April. And again, just like when we were up in the polytunnel, I've just delayed planting these this weekend because these are another plant that first and foremost, frost will kill them. So you need, do need to make sure that you're past your last frost date and clear of all frosts. But also because it was cooler weather last week, these might have a bit of a problem settling down. So I have left these until this week too. And it's all very simple. Once you take out the module, pop it into the ground, and she's ready to go. Now that these are in place, I can hatch the next part of my plan. I'm sure you've all heard of the three sisters. We're not going to be doing the three sisters, but we are going to be doing the two sisters. And the reason for that is, is that we've attempted to grow the butternut squash now for the last couple of years up this pergola and haven't had great success with it. And we do like a butternut squash. Didn't help last year, they went out really late either and they do need quite a long growing season. So what I'm going to do this season is to let them sprawl along the ground winding their way in between the sweet corn so i shall just position where i want them for no other reason than i quite like the idea of it i'm going to stagger them Now they should quite enjoy being in here with all this manure. They have plenty of feed because squash are hungry plants. Here are the hunter squash. We got some late germination, didn't we? They took a long time to germinate. In fact, there's one just now coming through under yeah. that leaf there. Look, so he just popped its head through. So yeah. They, uh, they were a bit slow starters, but they're through. And we've got four nice ones, so we'll yeah. run with those. <laughs> so I'm just going to make a hole to accommodate the plant. They quickly establish. And that's why when we did the sow with us, we said, you know, don't be in a huge amount of hurry to actually sow them. Because within about three weeks, these are about three, just over three weeks old, they soon establish themselves. I don't know what I'm thinking about, Mrs W. I call this plot one. This is actually plot two. It is. Easy mistake to make. <laughs> it's my age, folks. <laughs> but no matter, it's now planted up. And we're also growing the curry squash. They will grow up the pergola because they were very successful last year. As you can see, I've put those in. Well, actually, Mrs W put those in. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they'll get away nicely. And it's important to remember that with summer plantings, if you go days without water to keep these watered, they don't need gallons of it, but do just keep them watered while they're young. The last thing you want these to do is to keel over because they've just got too dry and Hadn't, haven't had access to water. Once they get established and get going, they can more or less cope with things unless we get a really dry barren spell, which we did in 2020, didn't we? Did, Where we yes. went quite a number of weeks without water. So we needed to do some watering. And of course, in your undercover growing spaces, 
all of these plants, whether they be tomatoes, melons, cucumbers, peppers to some degree, aubergines, they need regular watering. If you go away for a week or so and then come back, that can affect your yield and the quality of fruit that you're going to get. It'll be like a jungle in here in the summer, won't it? <laughs> yeah, but what a jungle. What a jungle, Mrs W. <laughs> we'll have a bit more to say on watering in a future video that you'll probably see in a couple of weeks' time, so don't miss that. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, then please do subscribe to our channel. You won't miss that video because watering is very important, especially when you're growing undercover. I hope you've had a fantastic weekend out there in the garden. We most certainly have. We shall see you back here in our new dig Norfolk garden on Thursday.